Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I understand it's late, um, so we'll try to be quick. Um, <clears throat> let me introduce my uh, fellow panelists um, who are going to be on stage today with me. Um, it's uh, Pavel Nazarov, who is the Managing Director and Head of uh, Business Development at Dubai Ports World. Christian Wilhelm, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Shipsta, and Zvi Schreiber, founder and CEO of Freitos. Myself is Anton Schutin. I'm a managing partner at RTP Global. So let's start, gentlemen. Um, obviously, the, the ships uh, only make money when they're uh, out in the sea and not when they're st stuck at the ports. And for centuries, the logistics industry suffered from inefficiencies, um, given that the ships had to spend almost half of the time um, being loaded and unloaded in the ports. And I think the radical change in the industry uh, took place um, in the mid of 20th century with the invention of the um, standardized intermodal container by Malcolm McLean in 1956. Um, the uh, container could be used seamlessly, obviously, between the different modes of transportation, road, um, railways, and, and ocean freight. And that enabled significant changes in the industry. The, uh, the average time to um, load the ship um, was reduced by 22 times. The cost of um, loading the ship um, was reduced by 36 times. Um, and that basically um, was a real revolution in the industry that paved the way for the growth in the global trade that followed that. Um, today, um, the industry is, is basically 12 trillion worth of goods that are being shipped globally. 60% um, of that is uh, container freight. Uh, the um, industry itself is a $300 billion industry in terms of the revenues of all the participants in that industry, uh, about 150 million TUs, uh, no, 20 uh, feet equivalent container units have been shipped annually uh, worldwide. Um, so, and that number has actually increased by um, the factor of three just over the last 20 years. So my question, I guess, is to you, Christian. Do you think that the digitalization in logistics um, is, is uh, going to have the same profound effect on the industry as did the invention of the intermodal container. Is data the new container, essentially? <laughs> That's a good question, I guess. Uh, absolutely, yes, because uh, we saw that uh, digitalization is reshaping other industries um, like uh, the automotive industry with uh, Uber or uh, communication with Skype, and I think uh, definitely yes. Um, from, from my point of view, I will give you an, a good example. I discussed that topic a couple of weeks with my former colleague, with the C, C Freight, uh, head of Sea Freight for Kuno Nagel. Kuno Nagel is one of the biggest logistic company in the world. And I met him in Hamburg, and he asked me, hey, Christian, I saw that your business is running as well, but how many containers do you have already? Right? And I said, well, ah, we have actually right now 280,000. And he said, wow, that's not bad. But we, Kuno Nagel, you know, we, we, we are the biggest one in the world. We have four million containers. I said, yeah, that's true, that left. But uh, our forecast is next year already 1.25 million containers will procure via our platform. And a year later, we've foreseen four million containers. So the answer is definitely yes. The question is only when. OK. Thank you. And I think. Given the industry, the logistics industry um, uh, has uh, significant competitive modes, um, such as the high uh, fixed asset intensity and, and uh, high working capital requirements, um, it's difficult for new entrants to, uh, uh, to, to disrupt it uh, to a certain extent. Um, I think the freight forwarding space was the first to be attacked uh, by the digital disruptors because it's relatively asset light. Um, and uh, we've seen companies like Flexport or, or FlexHub, for example, um, um, trying to disrupt that space by analyzing better the uh, um, different um, customer data um, across different routes um, and um, trying to optimize um, the, uh, the shipments of goods, essentially, in such a way that it would cut the, the time 
uh, significantly uh, for, for their customers. Um, however, the digitalization uh, the, of freight forwarding is essentially akin to uh, um, an offline retailer opening up an e-commerce site. So obviously the customer experience is improved, uh, but the uh, fundamental processes, industrial processes uh, that run underneath um, still remain inefficient. So the back end is still inefficient. Um, and that's why some of the uh, freight forwarding companies are trying to um, vertically integrate, essentially, in order to be able to um, uh, solve some of, the, some of these uh, inefficiencies in the back end. Um, and Flexport, for example, um, uh, leases its own warehouses and cargo jets. Um, Zvi, I guess my next question is to you. Um, how different is, is Freightos from what uh, these freight forwarders are doing? Obviously, I understand that uh, Freitas is a price comparison marketplace with the booking capabilities. Is, is that right? Yeah, we are. Maybe I should just explain in a few words. Uh, first of all, for those who don't know, the shipping industry is incredibly backward. It's such an important industry. You know, 90% of the products you buy are imported. Uh, if you look at the labels on your clothes and your gadgets, almost everything that you buy is imported. So our entire lifestyle is based on shipping, and yet it's an incredibly... Uh, offline, old-fashioned industry. And I discovered this when I was doing shipping a few years ago, and I thought that shipping a container would be like booking a flight. You, you go online, you compare, you book. Uh, but it's nothing like that. It takes days just to get a price quote. Um, and then you, you always get screwed, and they always add surcharges. So it's really like passenger travel was 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, the model of uh, Freitas is, is not to be a freight forwarder, uh, like a Flexport or like the trad traditional freight forwarders, but to be like an Expedia or a Skyscanner where we help the importers and the exporters to compare prices and have a modern experience where they can compare prices and book online and have a easy, you know, quick experience and be a transparent experience where they get the, the, the best rate. And that's, you know, that's our goal, just to bring the same efficiencies that we enjoy in passenger travel, bring the same thing to logistics. Right, right. And if we talk about freight forwarders, do you think that um, uh, some of them, or maybe all of them, would have to pivot towards the Flexport kind of asset-heavy full-stack model just in order to be able to solve the inefficiencies in the, in the back end? Or do you think that the industry would evolve and, and, and all these inefficiencies would fade away at some point? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, Flexport, for those who don't know, is a relatively new uh, but, but more digital freight forwarder who've... Uh, received a, a billion dollar investment from SoftBank, so very high profile in that respect. Um, I like some of what they're doing. They're, they're trying to make freight forwarding a lot more digital and, and automated, which is great. Um, I have no idea why they're leasing aircraft, and, and uh, uh, I don't know why they're, they're integrating vertically. There's no shortage of um, air capacity in the world, and I'm not sure why they're adding to it. So I wish them luck, but I don't particularly understand that aspect of their business. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Christian, and Shipstar, as I understand, is um, trying to build an uh, open transactional marketplace for logistic services procurement um, in addition to the existing product, which is, I understand, the tendering software. Um, so um, I guess the logic is that you um, try and acquire the customers, the shippers, and in the carriers through the tendering product with a view to leverage that in building your next uh, product, which is the marketplace for uh, uh, electronic procurement of both spot and contract buying. Can you perhaps elaborate a little bit on your strategy? Yeah, sure. Uh, exactly, that's, uh, th that, that's the plan, that's the roadmap. Uh, we're starting with a logistic platform, that meaning that we are connect the shipper with the carrier uh, with our logistic platform, so our target group right now is the big shipper. So our customers are uh, ArcelorMittal, for example, the biggest uh, steel company in the world, or, or Bayer, or Continentale, and so on. And they have a need, they have a need to procure freight. And uh, they do that uh, more efficient in, with our platform. Uh, and they connect us, the shipper connect us with the carrier, or they invite them to, to the platform. And what we are launched right now is uh, in Q1 is the marketplace. So because our vision is to uh, provide or give everybody in the world 
uh, access to procure freight online. Thank you. I think the recent digitalization of some of the uh, supply chains in the industry led to um, the traditional LSPs also investing and um, uh, um, uh, essentially automating some of their processes. Um, I know that some of the uh, uh, traditional players in the industry like DHL, for example, have launched um, some uh, solutions specifically for the um, uh, ocean freight industry, like Ocean View, for example, um, and uh, Panalpine, I think, um, launched uh, a similar solution in Germany, and uh, Dubai Ports also launched a solution for um, uh, ocean shipping in the UK. So, Pavel, I guess the next question is to you. How successful do you think that the uh, traditional logistics service providers and the uh, incumbents in the industry would be at embracing digitalization and um, how open would they be to cooperating essentially and integrating with some of the uh, new digital disruptors like uh, Shipstar or Freighters, for example? Well, I think all uh, uh, traditional players that um um, want to expand it into digitalization, they need to have a very clear focus on the needs of uh, cargo owners. The, the, the way uh, these players use um, data needs to be entirely focused on helping to resolve some of the issues that the cargo owners uh, face. And while uh, LSPs cannot directly influence um, uh, revenue that the, car that the cargo owners uh, earn, they, they, they can put together products that help um, uh, cargo owners minimize opportunity cost of uh, delayed shipments, opportunity costs of uh, having um, uh, products delivered to distribution centers rather than directly to shelves and having shelves uh, uh, be empty when there is a demand for a particular uh, product. So they need to really look at the highly granular data and um, uh, use that data to uh, create um, platforms and to create products that are highly beneficial for the ultimate um, uh, cargo owners. And to echo some of, of what um, Zvi has said, um, this industry is, is very arcane in terms of uh, digitalization and in terms of uh, um, uh, digital products that are available to cargo owners. Um, I'll give you two examples from, from our experience. Um, we have, we're working, well, one, of, one of the clients, one of the cargo owners that ships goods through, um, through our ports is a major um, uh, automotive company. Highly complicated manufacturing processes, highly uh, complicated factories. But they are forced to tie up over 30 weeks worth of inventory on shore just to ensure that their you know, Six Sigma Black Belt um, uh, processes in their factories work efficiently. So while they're creating efficiency in one area of the business, they're still stuck with 30, you know, half a year worth of uh, uh, working capital uh, in their warehouses. Uh, another example, um, we work very closely with various customs around the world and uh, if you're shipping furniture, do not put the word chocolate anywhere to describe the color of that furniture. We had customers that uh, had um, uh, their uh, products pulled for sanitary inspection because they were sh uh, uh, shipping chocolate-colored sofas. So that's, it's that right. basic. Uh, the, the customs are looking at a word. They're doing essentially a word search in the, in the list of uh, goods without actually realizing what it is that, uh, that's being shipped inside, uh, that is shipped inside those containers. Got it. So to, um, to, to summarize, uh, to be successful, you really need to take advantage of granular data and you need to structure it in such a way that the cargo owners are able to see real measurable P&L effects. Uh, in, in their business. Okay. I think we ran out of time, but one final question. Can you give us a little bit of background on Dubai Ports World and what is your digital strategy? Uh, well, DP World is uh, uh, one of the largest uh, port operators in the world. We handle about 10% of all uh, global trade. We have 80 uh, terminals around the world. Um, and our digital strategy um, is 
uh, well, our innovation strategy is kind of twofold. Uh, there's clearly innovation that's very relevant to our business, that's inside the business, and that's the realm of our engineers and our IT teams. But then there's innovation that's next to the business, and that's uh, you know guys like Zvi and Christian and uh, some others that will speak later or that that are present here at this at this conference. And we are, you know, very much uh, focused on trying to explore these uh, digital business models, uh, these new technologies that can create value for cargo owners and that can create, again, measurable effects on, uh, on, on their businesses. And yeah, we're looking to either make uh, investments or to partner up with, uh, with startups in the logistics tech space. Thank you, Pavel. I think this concludes our session for today. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, gentlemen, for participating on the panel. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.